started if you want, Joe. I got oh, it. Got it. Yeah, and then I think what we'll do is use the transcript since we should oh, be. Good call. We should be doing that on a regular basis too. You can, if you don't like the transcript at the bottom of the screen, you can go into your settings in your toolbar and turn it off for your computer. But we're trying to be better about being ADA compliant at State Library and, and do things better. So that is a little addition. Also, we've had a lot of librarians tell us it's kind of nice because if they're on a desk or something, and they really don't want to wear their headphones and they can kind of follow along by with the caption. So anyway, so this tentative agenda was just to do introductions. So before we actually approve the agenda, I think we'll do introductions and then I'll ask uh, our, um, so if you have jo officially joined the committee, please say, because we have a couple of people who are with us today who um, had not officially joined the committee yet, but you're all welcome to. And um, and let's just go around. So I'll start. I'm Joe Flick. I'm your continuing education coordinator at the State Library. And just a little bit about like our background and interest <laughs> in this committee. And I'll tell you that, you know, my interest is in getting it sort of broadening the way that we determine what continuing education things we do at the State Library. Um, and, and this is the first time we've had a actual sort of advisory committee that's just focused on professional development and training. And my background is in instructional design. I am not a librarian, <gasps> although I work for a library. I know. <laughs> but my master's is in instructional systems technology, actually. So yeah, so um, that's me. Full, full disclosure there. So uh, Martha, I'm going to have you go next. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Martha Furman. I am the assistant director at Imaginative Libraries up in Flathead County. Um, I've been here for about 15 years. Initially, when I came on, I was doing adult services and teen. Then I did youth services for quite a while. And then I worked in administration. And now here I am, assistant director. Um, and I am very interested in professional development personally as I look at the skills that I want to learn. And I feel really interested in sort of like a holistic picture for the state. What do we wanna learn as a professional community? Where do we wanna take librarianship thus um, through what we learn? So um, just interested in sort of like shaping and thinking about um, what Montana libraries can look like through that kind of lens. So now you get to pick the next person. Oh, well, um, is it Kylie? Oh, it is Kylie. Yeah. yeah, you're next it's, to me in my view here, so let's oh, go cool. that way. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I'm Kylie McGregor. I'm the trainer for the Montana Shared Catalog Consortium. Uh, and I'm here because it's really helpful for me to know what folks want to learn about before I create training. Um, and I've also been slowly getting a background in instructional design, partly from Joe, uh, partly from my own professional That's development. Dangerous, yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Go right to the source. And um, yeah, looking at moving training from just a help desk or just one off webinars to actual structuring them as courses in a learning management system is what I'm hoping to do. So um, be great to get folks feedback and ideas from the start. Oh, and I get to pick. Ooh, um, is it Desiree? Desiree, go for it. Hi, everybody. I am Desiree Funston. I'm a reference librarian at Missoula Public Library. Um, I've been working in Montana libraries for 13 years or so now. I've been at Missoula Public for about seven and a half. Um, I've been a member of the MLA's Professional Development Committee for a number of years now. I'm not quite sure how long, five or six. Um, I was one of Joe's guinea pigs for the personal professional development plan pathway to certification. There's a lot of P's in that whole sentence. But, um, we now just call it the strategic track. Strategic track. That's easier. Thank yes, you. Yes, I know. That first name I was descriptive, but a little bit of a mouthful. A yeah. mouthful for sure. Strategic pathway. I like that better. So I was one of the first people to that completed that, and I really enjoyed it. And I think it makes a lot of sense for people who 
have been working professionally for a while to have um, something other than just webinars and and having to check the boxes um, for the old um, or the standard certification path. So anyway, I have interest in professional development and I'm happy to be hard, part of this committee. Thanks. And I'm going to turn it over to Kelly. Oh, we don't hear you, Kelly. Okay, now I got it. Sorry about that. That's okay. We'd okay. love watching your mouth move. There. <laughs> Especially with all the braces, right? Oh, they're um, beautiful. Give us a big <laughs> smile. That's great. So I am the director at the Sydney Richland County Library. I've been here about six years. Um, my background is not in library prior to this. And so when I started, luckily there was a leadership institute in the summer that Joe did. And it was literally a lifesaver, a lifeline for me. I made a lot of connections and um, and it just was so wonderful to start and that training made all the difference for me. So I think that's where my uh, kind of passion comes from in training because in small rural libraries, um, you know, a director often comes on and is here for a number of months before they get a lot of training. And uh, so I'm really interested in this and excited to be a part of it. So pick somebody. Uh, how about Melanie? Hello, um, I'm Melanie Cudietta. I am um, one of two librarians at the Yellowstone Research Library in Yellowstone National Park. Um, we are located in Gardner. Um, me and the other librarian, we share all librarianship duties. So um, we are not uh, siloed like uh, many institutions are. I've been here for only about an, a year and a half. Prior to that, I was in academic libraries um, mostly in access services, uh, most recently at Montana State Library um, in Bozeman. So, um, but also in Colorado um, and in Ohio uh, at Oberlin College. So um, what interested me about this is kind of twofold. Uh, when I was in access services and managing a whole bunch of people, um, we had uh, sometimes not a lot of funding for um, you know training and for people to go to conferences, um, but we had people who um, had been there a long time and they wanted to get better at their jobs, but we also had younger people who were interested in becoming librarians and I saw a need for that. Um, but now that I am in um, a very isolated area, uh, very far away from any other librarian bre brethren, I'm also interested uh, in this in myself, for myself, and I'm interested in um, as some as you were saying, like a like a structured a structured thing that goes beyond just one off webinars, which I think sometimes are just more introductions to get a more cohesive view of what librarianship looks like in Montana. We're really um, happy to have you here. I, I was pleased to have a special library on the committee. I think, and the person who isn't here today is um, oh gosh, her name just went out of from um, Montana State. Uh, Oh, it'll come back to me. Anyway, um, you know, it, we it, we have a nice kind of, we don't have any school librarians on the committee yet, um, but we can actually, I'll, I'll explain why I wasn't particularly concerned about that because our, our, our primary audience are public libraries. That's our primary mission, but we like to, you know, public libraries include special libraries like the Yellowstone public, the Yellowstone National Park Library because they are open to the public and tribal libraries, so. Anyway, welcome, Melanie. You. you get to pick somebody. Oh, 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 who hasn't gone? Yeah, you have to um, figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Megan, have you gone yet? You Megan, have to you're muted. I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> you were admiring your map earlier. Yeah, this is my travel map. We're traveling every month to a new place through reading. So cool. I, I've been documenting that on the map. Kind of fun. Um, so I've been in the, so I'm at, I'm the library director at the Glasgow City County Library. And I will be here seven years in November. And like uh, Kelly was talking, I, I, I can relate to a lot of the things that she said. Um, when I started, it was so meaningful to have these different training opportunities and things to learn 
so I can do my job better. And because I'm so new to this, this uh, profession, my background is actually in the arts. So it was kind of, you know, a different, a different side to take. <laughs> but um, anyway, I just, I love professional development. And this really interested me when you put it out. I think that you all have so much experience and I'm just really excited to be on here and to learn and to help got like help with this group and hopefully I have something to give as well <laughs> so well you're one of my small library um representatives so I was really happy to have yeah. you I mean yeah. actually I think this is a very great I mean I was just really thrilled people have stepped up so you're going to pick somebody oh so I I could see Amelia yeah I see Amelia on here yeah, let Amelia go. Amelia. Yeah, Amelia. Yeah, sorry, I was a little bit late. Um, <clears throat> also, Melly, you said that you were a librarian at Oberlin College, which is so funny because I went to Oberlin. <laughs> um, it's just like rare to find someone out here who like knows about tiny obscure <laughs> liberal arts colleges in Ohio. Mont uh, Montana is a small town, you know, with, yeah. really, with really long streets. So that's, that is so wild. Um, but I'm Amelia. Uh, I am the lifelong learning librarian at the Montana State Library. Um, and I've been here uh, just over three years. I think I just hit the three year mark. Um, and I've had a really great time learning about all the different kinds of public libraries and see, working in, in various areas. Um, I obviously do not do as much training as, as Joe does, but some of the programs and initiatives that I work with do um, require some training. Um, and so that's been a super fun part of my job. And I'm always kind of on the lookout, talking with Joe and sort of listening to folks about what other topics people are interested in. Um, so like what a few of you have said, um, I think there's a lot of interest in, in more training, more in-depth training, and I'd like to be present for these conversations so I can help out as best I can. So mm -hmm. um, do I need to pick another person or? There's only one person left. So Dave. Ah, Dave, Dave, I believe it's your turn. Um, hi, um, I am hi. lurking. Uh, <laughs> I'm the cataloger at Billings Public Library. I've been doing it for eh, almost 20 years. Um, I'm interested in some professional development for, uh, well, you know, uh, for catalogers in particular, or someone who, un you know, for understanding how the catalog and the software works. Because way back when I was more or less uh, self-taught um, trial and error and lots of mistakes. And I, it, I'd like to see more training for, you know, just library staff in general, just to get the big picture if it's possible. Are you with the shared catalog, your library? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I've been a member of the CMC for, um, I think since 2009. The content management committee, sorry. Right. Yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> we have a lot of extra letters here. Well, you're welcome to lurk and feel f I, I'm sure this this is like I said pretty loosey-goosey so um, you know just jump in and if you decide you do want to join the committee formally let just let me know because that's all it takes you volunteer there's no like formal process for getting onto this very exclusive committee <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway um, so I kind of laid out a tentative agenda but um, I would very much like um, you guys to maybe add to it or I'm not sure we'll even get through everything today um, uh, but what do you think about this as an agenda and how do you feel about that I'm gonna not follow Robert's rules of order necessarily and ask for an approval of the agenda but I would like you to feel like you can add or delete things um, as you like Joe are you sharing your screen I thought I it was see the agenda all right let me try that again try that yep cool thank you thanks for letting me know
Does anything, anything you guys want to add to this or rearrange anything? I was going to spend about five minutes kind of on that number two item, just kind of giving you some background. So what do y'all think? I think this looks good. Um, I don't know if this would be the best place or if this is appropriate. Um, and I think I've mentioned, maybe I did mention this to you, Joe. I don't know if I did. Um, but there's just like curriculums that we are pending participation in. So things that like I have signed up for as the state library rep to eventually roll out to folks in Montana. Um, so I don't know if, if we want to discuss those and, and talk about them, but that perhaps is a little bit more specific than the broader things mentioned here. We can certainly add a, um, maybe right here between three and we add one right here. And I'll make Camellia put you in there. Um, well, then let me give you a very, very, very quick um, overview of um, how how training works and more specifically some limitations we have on what training we can conduct at the state library. Um, my position and Amelia's position, not necessarily Kylie's position, are fully funded by the library, the LSTA, the Library Services Technology Act, um, which is administered through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So we are federally, federally funded and under the rules of that of that funding, there are limitations on, on what we can do. So when I came into this job, uh, which is 11 years ago almost, um, well, I guess this is my 11 years, so 10 years ago, we were, I was, ex it was explained to me that the state library's primary mission in state statute is to provide core collaborative services um, and for public libraries and to set public library standards. So that's what the commission does. And so um, part a big part of my job then is to prioritize training that supports those state library training act, uh, training services. So um, the Montana Shared Catalog, of course, that's really, Kylie does that training, but uh, things that support the Montana Memory Project and the, um, the strategic planning that we're trying to get trustees to do um, anything that basically is a is a related to a standard for public libraries is a area of training that I'm I'm directed to support and we're directed to support but LSTA's limitations are that you know some things that I'd really love to train you on like how to write a really good grant that is not allowed under the funding mechanism. I can't really get into anything related to lobbying or advocacy, to marketing, general marketing. I can do training on specific programs that are already LSTA funded, but like the current stuff that we're doing with the um, hotspot lending program, but on generally how to market your library, I can't do training on that. I can't do grantsmanship and I can't do fundraising and I can't do advocacy. And I, when I say I, I mean state library can't. Nobody at state library can. We're all LSTA funded most of our positions, except for Tracy. Tracy is allowed to do some because her position is really funded directly by the state. So we have some limitations that are kind of brick walls that we can't really get around. Um, it has always been the position of the state library that we do not charge for training and because of the open meeting and access laws of Montana, we've generally approached all of our training that it is open and free to anyone to attend. And we have occasionally had people come into our training off the street and um, I always welcome them and sit them down and they usually stay for 15 minutes and leave but <laughs> but it, they are open to the public and we do promote all of our training activities on the Aspen e-calendar and anybody could log in to those events if they wanted to um, 
and I will say, and this is directly in regard to what you were mentioning, Dave, you know, there, there's kind of a reason that I don't, that I don't plan a lot of general cataloging training and and that's because other people do um lots of other there there is quite a bit of cataloging general cataloging training provided by um, other providers that make it available for free oclc being the primary one um, so and if, when there are topics related to something that's really montana specific then you know kylie and i will get in there and if it's cataloging and um, collaborate on getting getting something out there for you but um, generally speaking, that's one of the reasons you don't see us offering a lot of catalog. But that stuff is hard to find, and that's why I think it's really worth talking about. So, because we probably do need to find more ways to create learning pathways to that content, so you can you can easily find it and make your way through it. So that's just a little background that covers item two in the agenda. So let's take some time to brainstorm some activities and responsibilities for this committee. I mean, when you joined up, what was your conception of what this committee would be doing? And I'll take some notes on that. What should this committee be doing? I could see, I just, I'm a strategic person. I've been fully convinced over the past 15 years of the need for planning. Um, so I, I feel like taking some time to look at step one, what should step one be? Um, and in my mind, I would think a little bit of visioning. Uh, what does the future look like? What are some of the challenges facing libraries right now in Montana? Um, what will be coming? what does the professional landscape look like in general in the United States? Like what are the big issues facing libraries today? Is Montana keeping pace? That sort of thing. That's great. So do you see, you see the, I'm going to just kind of extrapolate from that, that you maybe see this committee as um, helping MSL staff to prioritize to con what content we're seeking out and presenting? I think so. I just, right before COVID, I don't know, did any of you attend um, PLA in Nashville? No, I didn't. So, Anybody else? Um, that was like really right before, I mean, it was the end of February, 2020. And um, that Public Library Association conference felt so different from many others that I had been to. Um, the focus really was um, EDI, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And um, they did a fantastic job of making the conference very forward thinking. And I really had my mind blown and then COVID hit and then um, there was a racial, racial justice movement over the summer. I know that libraries are still grappling with um, EDI. And so I see that as being a big chunk. And it's a difficult thing for us to address in Flathead County. I suspect that other communities in Montana uh, face similar difficulties in addressing anti-racism in libraries, especially with the critical race theory conversation going on right now. Um, so those are some things that's sort of like in my brain where I left off pre-COVID and now, you know, COVID changed so many things for us and also sort of like sharpened a lot of our resolve to work on certain issues, but just in terms of the national landscape, that is what I saw most recently as a major, major focus um, I think for public that, libraries anyway. And that's, I think, really in keeping with those limitations and, and kind of that framework that we do have to operate under because even though equity, diversity, inclusion, all of this stuff is going on way beyond Montana, Montana has some specific kind of nuances to that 
to exploring those those uh, issues. And it and it's really helpful, I think, to localize a topic like that to some degree. So mm -hmm. it's a good one. It's a good example, I think, of the kind of things that this committee can do is say, yeah, I went to the I went to ALA, you know. This, this is really, is what, really yeah. interesting. That here's how it really applies in Montana, and what we can, we should be doing here, and um, to help our librarians implement or um, learn about that issue. On a selfish note, from my end, a lot of times I'll like hear about stuff that other libraries are doing, or I'll read something. Um, I would love, like, I would really love to hear from this committee if there's like something of interest to you guys in terms of trends that are happening or, or new issues that libraries are grappling with. Um, I think especially after with, with COVID and stuff, I mean, I think I'm always very aware that there's so many cool ideas and, and programs out there, but I want to be respectful of the kind of the the resources that libraries have in terms of time and and money and i know that they're sometimes already kind of stretched thin so i think sometimes like if i'm really excited about something i'll be like oh who wants to work on this but sometimes i feel bad about being like basically like who wants who wants more work <laughs> on top of what you're already doing and you know, this might mean you actually have to take something off that you're really excited about to put this on that I, like you're excited about, but like I'm excited about. So it would be really great to have more things generated from, from the libraries that are coming to me as opposed to me bringing things to libraries. Um, and I mean, that, that, has, that has worked and I think it's, it's been good, but I, feel, I think I feel less guilty <laughs> if things are, being asked for by the libraries. Um. Yeah, we. I think we at MSL are definitely guilty of kind of like the um, spaghetti approach to programs where we just throw everything against the wall to see what sticks. And um, it was, so if you guys could feel empowered to bring ideas up from the grassroots and let us know when the stuff we're taking is just not what you need or want and like specifically i'm super interested in like i mean i love the kind of fun things that pop up in my work but i'm really interested in doing like long term hey i'm a library here and i'm really interested in working on this for like the next 10 years um because i think i i think that's really when people are able to identify a need like that and like address it, um, I think that's, I mean, it just takes time <laughs> to do stuff. <laughs> um, and so, especially in those instances, I think it's really hard for me to ask a library to, you know, casually commit three to five years on something. So if there's big topics that libraries do want to work long term on those would be really helpful to be aware of that gets back to Martha's emphasis on planning that this team should be and and I'll, I'll just jump in you know one of the other things I, I didn't talk too much about it limited limitations but I feel I feel personally very strongly about this that our our job at the state library because of the resources that we wield should complement the activities of other providers and in our state that's primarily Montana Library Association but also to some degree trails is now offering a number of trainings and and this of course this um, there are other providers that you may utilize in our state the museum association and you might go to a regional conference so I often try not I mean quite tactically try not to plan training that they are already doing. I try to make our training different and complementary to that because we don't want to supplant ML, what MLA is doing or um, because they have their own kind of agenda. And if they're not successful, then we all are not as successful. So, you know, I try to, I try to 
sidestep that. Debbie and I actually work a lot together on um, on training activities. So, but I like the idea you that you mentioned taking a longer view, Amelia. That's a that's very valuable. Anyone else have something you want to add to this list about what this committee should or should not be doing? Um, I have some. Well, like I have like a suggestion and then maybe a, a question as well. Um, and I'm not sure if you already have this, but are is there a like a comprehensive overview of what you have done in the past and what you have going on currently um, so that we can see kind of historically if there are like any any gaps or um, things that we relied heavily on, then maybe we could even start um, you know, then with our with our planning, you know, we could we could start moving forward from this really neat snapshot of where we are. So um, that's interesting. And oh, and I, I just want to interject Hannah McKelvey, Hannah and I couldn't remember your name like five minutes ago, um, has joined us and she's also on this committee from Montana State University. So say hi, Hannah. Hi. <laughs> she was in a meeting with her dean that ran long. So that's the best excuse ever, really. Um, uh, so as you mentioned that, one of the things I have put on my work plan for this year, um, saying I, since I'm planning to retire at the end of the calendar year for the fall, is I do want to actually do that kind of um, broad range analysis. When I came to the state library, I couldn't find anything on what we had trained in the past, except what was in the CE list. And that was usually just titles. And so I couldn't really get a sense of what the learning outcomes were that had been planned before. And, um, and I will say that, you know, Kylie and Amelia and Tracy and I have all been really trying to kind of pivot away from the one off webinar thing because there's a lot of, you know, one hour webinars out there where you can get a credit in something. And we are trying definitely to be more strategic. And so a lot of the things you guys are talking about, I mean, we've, we are already kind of pretty well positioned. We're about to sign a contract for our own Moodle instance. Um, so we will have the ability to create courses um, for librarians and across the state or and aggregate content that we've created in the past in a more formal a way for people to kind of track their progress. We're going to be releasing some um, sort of learning pathways in Moodle. So we're kind of already leaned pretty heavily in that direction. Um, and then those of you who've ever taken an online course know that the structure of that is actually really helpful to to as you're as you're working through it. Amelia and I have both um, hosted cohorts. We've worked um, with month, uh, Web Junction content and identified a, a course or a group, a, a, a bunch of content in Web Junction, and then we've organized opportunities for people to discuss and um, continue uh, and, and learn more together from those. And those have been really very well received in the evaluations we've gotten back. So back to your point, um, I am Melanie, I'm going to be doing that in the fall. So I'll bring that to you guys. I will have a complete analysis of the training we've done. And over the past five years is that my plan. And, um, and then I'll look at some of the, uh, I will be happy to share with you like evaluation data and and stuff like that. I'm also planning to work with Jessica to create a dashboard that shows who's attending what, because we're starting to get some attendance data now in Aspen that's that's useful that way. Before Aspen, we didn't really collect that data in a useful way. Um, so we should be able to see where um, where people are who are attending um, events where they're coming from in Montana and more probably more interesting if we have any um, desert zones of people who are just not doing a lot of libraries that are not doing a lot of training or at least not reporting any of it. So hopefully that'll, that'll, be, a, that'll be on our agenda for the fall. So good one. Thank you. It was a very good idea. So good. I, I actually have it in my work plan for the year, which is very convenient. And and Melanie is not a plant. Okay. Just saying. 
So what else should we be doing or not doing? We don't have to consider this list complete. We can keep working on it. And Amelia, did you get to, it felt like you kind of discussed your curricula of interest. Do you want to say any more about that? Um, well, the, the specific things that I'm working on right now, um, it, there's, um, YALSA has a Transforming Teen Services um, curriculum. It was originally an in-person training um, and it was meant to be given as an in-person training to folks around Montana. Um, but then something happened in March 2020. <laughs> um, so, right, that's all been converted online. And I'm currently working on putting those modules and, and making it fit for, for Montana things. Um, it's like some, mostly some cosmetic stuff and rehousing things. Um, but um, with the hope of, of possibly in the fall launching a cohort to go through the various topics they have there, which is like youth development, um, computational learning, connected learning, um, and um, an EDI module as well. Um, so that's a specific thing. There's another thing which I had picked up and kind of let down for a while, um, civil legal help in the library through Web Junction. Um, and I think there is some interest in that topic. Like I, I do know that's something that interfaces quite a bit with what librarians do these days. Um, and then, oh, reimagining school readiness. Um, and this is a partnership through an IMLS grant with um, the San Francisco Bay Discover Discovery Museum, I think. So that's under the Ready to Read um, initiative. Um, so these are all things that I've like kind of already committed to because um, I was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's, there's people who will be interested in this. <laughs> um, but I, I think there might be more opportunities like this in the future. And it, I love it if I could just kind of toss it to this group and be like, yay, nay. Get some or, feedback. Yeah. 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 So. I think, I mean, we've, we've definitely kind of had a, uh, ivory tower approach to planning training at the state library where the the staff at the state library you know kind of goes like this you know what kind of training do people need and the 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 consultants will say they need this and they need that and 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 of course training related to the services the collaborative services that and programs that that we offer that's kind of a no-brainer and will always be part of what we do but this other kind of stuff you know like I said we kind of use this we kind of make an internal decision and then we just throw it like spaghetti up against the wall and wait and see we are not doing um the kind of and I was trained to do in in uh in graduate school in terms of making some analysis about what needs were and we do I mean we do use the evalu the comments that people make in in our evaluations when you fill out an evaluation after a training and there's a little spot there for you to make suggestions we do use those um, as as kind of a, a suggestion and we we do talk to the federations at the federation meeting so we're talking to public library directors there and getting and then we also of course if we see a a deficit that is clearly could be addressed by training um, in terms of how people are behaving um, and that sounds very kind of I don't know um, dictatorial but <laughs> like we're a bunch of dictators if they're not behaving properly we're going to train them more but if we see say as people are are creating their errors or or difficulties or struggles that public libraries are having that we see are happening, then we, if, if there's a training component to that issue, then, then the consultants will advise me and we'll talk about it. And the next thing you know, we'll be doing training on it. So that's kind of how we've done it in the past. So I could definitely see this committee being much more of a grassroots and helping us with that 
analytical part. I, I would also like to be able to tell you on, you know, the 1st of September, what kinds of training we're going to be doing for the next year, what our training priorities are, because I feel like we tend to do a lot of knee jerk response to things and that isn't as effective. So I don't think as an instructional designer, training really should be planned and intentional to, and you should be measuring the outcomes of that training. <laughs> so I always tell all my trainers, if you haven't evaluated, then you have, there's no proof that you did anything except take up people's time. <laughs> So don't I say that, guys? I do say that. <laughs> She's usually very nice about it, though. <laughs> <laughs> what? You didn't bother to evaluate? Um, Joe, if I could jump in here. Sure. Uh, just to add a curricula sort of content is what I'd really like to do as part of my job, um, since I train on our shared catalog software so that may not be relevant to all of you but um is to have courses or modules for new staff or folks who are want a refresher on a process um to be able to come in and you know the director could say oh you're new to this position take these um this series of courses or modules and then once you've completed that you're good to go on these tasks in the library using the software. It's it's not the sexiest of uh, content, but it's definitely important. So um, I want to make it easier on, you know, new hires or p folks that are kind of shifting positions to be able to say, I've taken this training, I'm qualified to do this thing. Um, and that can be tracked. And, and I, Joe probably brought this up already, but with our uh, with the Moodle instance courses that you complete, should we should be able to set it up so that um, the credits that you get will automatically be transferred over into Aspen for your continuing education. So those two systems will talk to each other. Um, and you're talking about um, just to be clear, something we haven't done a lot of at the state library is just in time training or um self-paced training self-paced training yeah. correct and this is one of the things the direction we're moving in with our moodle um instance that we're we will be creating over the next month probably i think they have just all to, cleared yeah go ahead just to add a little nugget to that i know from doing research about staff recognition that um in particular new staff um respond really well to immediate training opportunities. So um, just to give it like a little more teeth, you can definitely argue that it helps ret with retention, with retaining Montana's okay. library staff to offer these training opportunities to new staff. Okay. It's a great idea. Also, I have to take my child to a doctor's appointment. So I have to leave a little early, but it was great to meet you all. And we'll see you next time. I'll be tuning in to when when do you want to meet next time? Let's jump to the very end. Oh, um, do you guys want to meet again in a month and kind of keep working on kind of describing the committee? Um, or do you want to wait on for a, a couple of months and meet less frequently? What were you thinking? I like once a month. <laughs> That's my vote. Anyone have any objections to meeting at least um, at the very beginning here once a month? I would agree. I think once a month to keep the momentum going would be nice. Okay, one of the, uh, Susan Gregory has a conflict at this time. So I'm gonna send out another doodle poll and get the July meeting set up. I'll do that right away. And I'll just say once a month for now, because this is entirely up to you guys. There's no rules on that. Um, and we're probably not going to quite get to discussing too much about um, how we want. I mean, you guys could decide that you want 
a specific number of people to serve and that you want to serve a specific length of time if you wanted to and you could decide you want a, a chair who works with me on developing the agenda for you um, it's it's kind of important i think to the meet the intention of these new core services committees that it be di more directed by you guys than by MSL staff and we have questions for you but um, I I don't want to I'm happy to take notes at meetings but I'd really like someone else to kind of set the agenda at least with me and um, and kind of run the meetings next time if we could get to that place so what do you all think about that I mean, I'm, I'm kind of bossy by nature, so I just kind of take things over things. I, I try really hard not to do that too much. <laughs> so what do you want us to do, Joe? What kind of governance or um, structure do you want? for this committee. Ah, I messed something up. Should we make that a topic to discuss next time? Does that sound like a good idea? I saw some nodding heads. Does anyone have any concerns about putting that off or any ideas I should capture right now? I sort of feel like we need to figure out what we're doing before we decide how to do it. <laughs> you know what? You might entirely be right about that. I'm going to make a note of that. <laughs> Would it be helpful, um, and this might be a lot harder for you to do, Joe, because I know that's like a constant ongoing thing on your work plan, but um, for me, if it'd be helpful, I could put together sort of like a, here's the training and stuff that I'm doing now, and here's how I think about that or plan it, because some of them I'm like, okay, yes, I'm trying to be strategic about it and some of them like oh that happened last year and it's a year again now and i gotta do it so um maybe i'll just like put together a one pager of all the training i do and stuff and i'll like put questions and comments and stuff in there and you guys can take a look at it so you know what i'm already doing <laughs> i'm going to capture that at the top because we i think um I think it is cool for this committee to consult on our training events because we do have some regular events um, mm -hmm. and I'll just make a note of them. They're ready to read rendezvous. Mm -hmm. The um, fall workshops or sometimes if we are not doing them in the fall, we call them N MSL workshops. And we haven't been, let's see, what other kind of regular things. Um, uh, Kylie, you have a um, regular training that you do um, at MS, uh, MSC meetings. Um, yeah, and also for libraries going live in our consortium, <clears throat> which can vary number of libraries doing that, but. And we do an annual trustee training event of some kind. And we do federation training. And other than that, we have been doing like, we did the ripple training and we've done the um, mind in the making training. So we've done some other like actual training events. So these are the kinds of things that we have traditionally done in the past. 
So let's continue this discussion. I'll share the notes with you and um, I'll send out a doodle poll. Let me put down my list of things to do. Sometimes I can't talk and type at the same time. It's always really helpful when people are watching you do it too. <laughs> Yeah, we'll pull for, for the sure. next meeting and um, and uh, discuss further the role of this committee. So um, I will say that when I was talking with Jenny about this, she she basically said as long as we are continuing to do the training work related to the public library standards and the collaborative programs that the state library runs. She said, the rest is totally up to the committee, how we do things. So, but I am at this very moment, I have, I have put off starting planning for the virtual fall workshops, which we we're thinking we would do sometime in November and December or December, um, because we were forming this committee and I wanted you all to feel like you had some role in it. And I can tell you the other thing I do is that I constantly collect ideas for trainers or training topics. And um, next time I will be happy to share with you my training sandbox. It's just a place I keep a whole bunch of notes in a spreadsheet um, about training ideas. And I get them from you guys and from libraries and from feedback on an evaluation form and from somebody who tells me something <laughs> or an email I see. <laughs> so um, I'd like to figure out a way to make that available for you guys all to just contribute to. Um, I only have it organized by the intended audience and it might be useful for you to see how I kind of frame what I think are our intended audiences too. You, I might, you might, you might disagree with me, and that would be a really useful conversation to have. So, sound good? That sounds great. You guys still all want to be on this committee? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's signing off. You can send me this email separately. Or take me off this committee. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, I uh, I would have to agree with what you said, what Jenny said about um, kind of staying in line with those public library standards. I think that, that would, that's a really good point that she made. Um, one of the things that would help me, and I know you talked about doing some sort of an analysis in the fall about your past and present and future curriculum and the things you've done. Is there any way that we could get something sooner than later just us to i feel like that would help me wrap my brain around some of this a little bit better um it doesn't have to be as thorough but i i like the sandbox though the sandbox idea i think is really cool i'm i'm looking forward to looking through that i could easily put a list of the training that we've offered for like the last three to five years everything because i know that's a lot actually but. it's 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 very easy to to get that okay okay <laughs> yeah okay. it's x you know anything it's in aspen i can get in a real hurry and we've had aspen for almost yeah. three years now yeah. so um at least the last three years i could easily do before our next okay. meeting get you a a list okay of something like that i i love the idea of the data um part where we can see like who is signing on who's taking these classes and what are people interested in mm -hmm. i like that yeah and i think you know the in the training sandbox too i also keep a list of a separate tab with list of providers because there's already there's always somebody coming into the library land offering some training and i many other state libraries license a lot more training content than we do um mm. a lot of them license the pci webinars from andrew sanderbeck we're hiring andrew sanderbeck to do the director's institute oh that's the other one i should put up here we do the um director's institute and the um uh the leadership institute 
these are infrequent. There's not really a schedule for when they're provided, but we do an, a leadership institute. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be very, I, I'm happy to do that. Okay. I work for you guys. Well, not really, I work for Trace, for Jenny, but. <laughs> But she's going to listen a lot to this committee. And I think so what will happen is your recommendations will actually when there's something formal you want to recommend, you know, say there's some service out there that you hear about, uh, you know, info people or um, gosh, there's a number of them, lynda.com. Um, uh, you know, you want to collaboratively see us spend some money to license something that would be available to libraries. Uh, we did license extra webinars, um, the PCI webinars at the beginning of COVID with some of our co uh, money that we were going to have left over because other things got canceled and they were very well received. We didn't keep it up. Um, but that's, a, a real, I think, a very appropriate role for that committee is to help us decide how to spend the funding we do have for um, training events. And the NAC really makes those decisions, but you can be recommending things. So technically the NAC Rec make recommendations to the commission and ultimately the commission actually assigns appropriates money but then to my knowledge they generally accept what the NAC recommends so you guys will be your opportunity as a committee would be to communicate to the to the NAC and you could you can direct um, uh, a memo to the Mac, NAC saying you know we're really convinced that you know, libraries need access to this training for equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, or we need to have this trainer come here to Montana, and that would have a great deal of weight. So, well, guys, I promise to keep you to an hour, and I I will I'll always try to do that unless you tell me not to. So. I will go ahead and get a doodle poll started and we our next meeting will be primarily just to discuss the further role of this committee and maybe discuss what kind of um, governance we do or don't we don't have to have any governance by the way. <laughs> There's no requirement on that. Um, it's just I personally would really like to be able to sit back and listen more so you're just doing it for me. <laughs> Okay, well, have a great rest of the week. Hopefully you have a fabulous weekend and things don't get too smoky too fast. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Hi, Joe. everyone. Thank Hi. you. Dave, are you joining? You're going to join the committee, you think? Oh, I feel like such a dunce after listening to you. Um, what? <laughs> okay, see, that's the problem. I should not be talking so much. Well, I mean, everyone on the committee... Um, why don't I'm an you? old dog. I, why don't you? It would be, I think, be a really oh. useful your input, especially as a cataloger, because that's that is a continual issue. Is get because there is turnover, and everybody comes into cataloging with a different level of expertise, knowledge, and and Absolutely. you 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 can do it really wrong if you. There is a one right. There aren't too many things in training where there's a one right right way to do things, and with cataloging, it kind of is. So. Oh. Yeah. Um. Sure. I mean, you're you know with well, Wes. When I started OCLC, they would come out in person about once a year, and now it's all online. So. Um. But we could yes. be organizing more cohorts to take um, together. Yeah. To I, to kind of. Because a lot of a lot of what I see with cataloging issues is that a lot are a lot's resolved when people do get together. Like when Beth Boyson organizes that pre-conference session at MLA um, mm -hmm. for the, you know, the Island of Misfit items. Um, that one is always so well attended and people learn from each other, you know, and then they, they have somebody to call when they have. Oh. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you know, it's probably a lot of what I do is is a uh, going away at some point. Um, you know, it's the move to e-resources. Um, 
that will, you know, it's a changing field, which makes, keeps it interesting. <laughs> and I was just at a meeting, I mean, this week, we were, as we were talking about the Director's Institute, and um, I was meeting with the director and our facilitator, and she was like, we, you know, we need to figure out a way to collaborate on technical services. That's obviously not the directive of this committee, but it speaks to some training issues around technical services that are constant, you know, and our, I'm sure our smaller libraries, and Megan's still here, um, would say this is an issue for her, you know, with those odd items that are probably sitting on the corner of her desk somewhere waiting <laughs> to get a oh, record yeah. created for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're, those items are not, you know, um, discoverable when they're sitting on our desk and they're not on the shelf and yeah and we have a you know we have a lot of people who are self-publishing out there in Montana and all those books have got to have records and mm -hmm. oh, yes yes yeah, what I'm doing today chipping away at a stack of self-published books <laughs> which we want to bring to the wow. into the into the resource sharing world you know we do mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's it, our job as librarians is to make those items available to the world. So, yeah, if only we could make cataloging um, not such a scary monster as, although even it, you have to do it. You know, doing um, is a is a best form of training, in my opinion. So, but not, not just your opinion. As an instructional <laughs> designer, I'll tell you that that's actually true. You will not retain anything unless you do something with it pretty quickly after you've learned it and we you know we did over the I winter agree. we did yeah we did this um cohort with a web junction uh course called um introduction to cataloging for non-catalogers i wanted to do that yeah we had like it, the class like filled up like overnight it did and, and then and then everybody decided to stay on and take the Library of Congress subject headings courses from Web Junction. There were two two individual webinars, and um, which frankly we not, none of us wanted to ever take them again after taking them. But but it was really interesting. I mean, it was uh, you know I'm not a cataloger and I facilitated the course, but I was completely not. I think very often you don't need to be in in a subject matter expert. You know, I wasn't teaching the course. I was merely bringing everybody together to talk about it. And, um, and it was very, I mean, I think we should probably do that again, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there are these resources out there that we can really increase the value of that resource by organizing a cohort around it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, I think Amelia does this, um, supercharged story times course on web junction as a cohort she tries to keep it to five or six people because the conversations are so lively and um, she always has a waiting list so you know you guys can help us you know somebody you see something on web junction and they're like i'd like to take that course but i probably never get around to it <laughs> but if you're in a cohort and you this is the other thing of my research on the cohorts in montana almost everybody actually does the course coursework just before the meeting <laughs> oh just like school yes including me and so um because i just asked in the in the evaluation you know on average do you complete the course like right away after our last meeting or within three to five days before the meeting or within one to two days before the meeting and almost everybody's one to two days before the meeting. So <laughs> if you have the meeting and you know that somebody's expecting you to have done the work, then you, so it's a motivator and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that, you know, so. Well, it's fresh in your head too, if you do it closer to. Yes, <laughs> yes, At least it's true. Or if I do it right after and then I will forget some of it, right? Right, right. before the course. Then so. you won't you won't be able to participate in the conversation as well. And I, <laughs> I think the other big motivator is that um, if you took that course just from Web Junction, you get two credits. But if you took it with in the cohort, you got four credits. Mm -hmm. So the and that was I think a big motivator too because people were looking for credits in that category. 
So sure. It was also not a very, it was a very unscary title. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Although, like I said, the library, we were like, we're going to do the Library of Congress subject headings, webinars one and two. And by the end of the second <laughs> webinar, we were all like, that was awful. Oh, <laughs> oh. yes, it is a, it's peculiar. Yeah, it was peculiar. <laughs> he went into great deal to detail about some of the um, history of the subject headings and how they were titled 20 years ago or 30 years ago and and it was interesting but for a non-cataloger way too much oh. information yeah so yeah i learned on the doing mmp descriptions i would think oh there's a wagon you look up there's there's not a has subject heading for wagon it's <laughs> carts and carriages <laughs> like, that's a freight wagon that's not a carriage or a cart <laughs> yeah so well I have to make it my own we have, to, we have to pay homage to the librarians before us who created yes. all these categories yeah all right well thanks dave you're yep. actually a member of the committee i'm adding you to my list uh, okay that was pretty hard all right thanks everybody bye bye